Uh, this is Mwesikuwa Mkua Bosco, the teacher wisdom center, Karumuna, at Sini uh, Yes, as, as usual, I'm again back that we look at uh, the work we go through. Um, remember, yes, I'm your science teacher, and today we want to look at different activities. But before we go far to our lessons, I have to remind you, please, uh, the students are watching us there. Yes, the reason why we come close to you is not easy this time because you can't access school, but we made it easy for you to be close to you and, and get lessons from home, just from home. But remember, yes, COVID-19 or coronavirus is real. Yes, keep home, stay home. That's the best solution. Stay home and have lessons from home. Yes, uh, sanitize your hands, okay? If you don't have sanitizers, yes, get clean water and soap. Wash yourself. Yes, whatever you touch and surface, make sure you tie, you wash your hands. Yes, you will sanitize yourself before transferring your, your hands to your faces, to the eyes, to the nose, and the mouth. Yes, so you can avoid those. Uh, yes, so this is good that we are back, we are here with you. So please stay safe and then for the lessons. Uh, today we are looking at uh, a new subtopic and that is uh, common diseases of cattle and goats. Yes, uh, simply we look at uh, diseases in goats and cattle. Yeah, we take a note that uh, uh, just like other living organisms, okay? Even cattle and goats can also suffer or get attacked by different diseases, yes, or infections. So this time, one look at them and see how we can control them, how we can prevent them is good, okay? So at uh, this time, we can look at uh, simply in two ways. When you want to understand diseases, basically, yes, let's say of animals, yes, even, uh, yeah, we look at, uh, in two terms, we, come, we look at, uh, uh, those that are, are parasitic or caused by parasites or infections, okay? So we can group them first in two terms here. Yes, so we can say diseases that affect cattle and goats can be grouped in two ways or into two, yes, parasitic diseases, okay, okay, and uh, infectious diseases, yes. Uh, before going forward to look at what are parasitic diseases, simply from the term parasites. Uh, sometime back we defined parasites and we say that uh, uh, for parasites are living organisms that, that uh, depend on others for survival. Okay? Yes, yeah, so they live on other bodies or in other bodies or in other living organisms for survival. These are the parasites. So these parasites can simply, let's say, spread diseases that can uh, spread germs that can cause diseases, okay? And then uh, when you go to infections or, or infectious diseases, this is, this is simply, uh, we can say that uh, there are diseases that can, that can be caused or that are caused by microorganisms, okay? Such as virus or bacteria, okay? These microorganisms, we don't see them. They are small living organisms, okay? Simply, they are germs, okay? Yes. So uh, let us uh, have a look at uh, some of them here in the group. Yes. Uh, so you can simply be asked uh, to look at how to write them diseases of cattle and goats, okay? Which are simply referred to as parasitic diseases. So just look at them here simply. Okay? Yes. So when looking at simply, yes, cattle and goat disease, okay, we say, let us look at them in two, two terms to make it easy for us. Let's look at those which are called parasitic diseases. And here we simply say that for parasitic diseases, they are diseases that can be, yes, spread, yes, by, by, by parasites. And the parasites, simply we say these parasites, okay, yes, they are living organisms that can stay or live on other bodies for survival. Yes, so they can be ticks, okay? Yes, they can be ticks, uh, they can be insects and flies. Yes, so they will either spread the, 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 the germs that can cause uh, any disease in the cattle. So as some of them here, okay? You can look at, uh, this is like hot water, okay? Okay, yes, this is simply spread by ticks. That's why we can also call it a tick bone disease. And then uh, we come to uh, red water. 
Okay? This is also parallel to this. We shall look, go ahead and look at uh, the signs and symptoms and then prevention of each disease. Yeah, and uh, we can still, yes, and no, yes, like uh, Nagana. Nagana is also, yes, uh, uh, yes, a paralytic disease called spread by, by, by vectors like uh, excessive like flies. Okay? And then you uh, can look at East Coast fever. East Coast fever. Yeah. So East Coast fever is uh, spread, yes, by ticks. And we are going to go ahead and look at uh, uh, the signs and symptoms. Okay? And then the prevention. Yeah, this is very important. Uh, so then uh, we can push the second part. Yes, then this was the first part where we grouped diseases as parasite diseases. And then uh, number two, this we, we need to look at uh, those which are called uh, infectious diseases. Okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, infectious diseases, uh, we can have other terms we can refer to this. We can also call them contagious, okay? Uh, yes, or communicable. Yeah, it can be called contagious. They can be called communicable. Yeah, diseases. So what we refer to infectious or communicable or infectious disease, we simply mean uh, this is a can easily be spread, yes, from one organism to another. You see, so this becomes infectious. For example, when you come into contact with any friend or any person, yes, and find you can get that means it's infectious. It can be airborne or it can be through body contact. Okay? So those are called infectious diseases. The, then, uh, we can uh, now look at some of them simply here uh, in animals we can have like anthrax okay anthrax uh, this is an infectious disease okay which is caused by bacteria yes you'll find that uh, this is uh, in case you find that uh, animals maybe feed together okay yes in uh, food can feeds can be contaminated and then also another one also can be also infected uh, that's why we call it infectious okay yeah, yes. Uh, we have more infectious diseases, okay? Like foot and mouth diseases. Disease. Foot and mouth disease. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is a uh, very common disease in cattle, okay? Uh, yes. Uh, both cattle and goats. So it's, in, it's infectious, can easily spread, yes, from one animal to another. Yes, so uh, looking, uh, just a recap, looking back here, we said we can simply classify, yes, diseases that, are, that affect cattle and goats into two groups. Those we can call them parasite diseases, okay? Those that are spread by parasites, okay, like ticks, like uh, cesspies, name it. Yes, so uh, these ones are called parasite key. This is simply because they are spread by parasites like hot water, red water, uh, nagana, and then uh, east coast fever. Yes, we shall look at a couple of them as we move ahead. And then uh, also the side of infectious diseases, which are also called contagious uh, or communicable diseases. Okay, these ones we say that uh, uh, they are simply, yes, uh, they, they, they can be simply spread, spread from one place to another from one organism to another organism, okay? From uh, one animal to another animal. Yes, uh, even the living, the, the cat disease, so there are other infectious diseases which you can look at when you come back here. I uh, talk about the coronavirus, it's infectious. When you get into close contact, that's why we say, yes, uh, keep a distance, okay? Uh, you will go ahead and look at differences which are infectious. But uh, for this case, we're looking at cattle diseases, okay? So we say that some of them like anthrax, the mouth diseases, it is, uh, these are very highly infectious. So we shall go ahead and look at more, yes, as we look at our table. Yeah, let us get uh, the table to you. Mm. Okay. Uh, yes, so 
Uh, having identified properly uh, the parasite diseases and then the infections. Okay? And we are now understand that for parasite diseases, they are diseases that are spread by parasites like hot water, red water, Nagana, East Coast, Coast Fever. Name it. And then uh, those of infectious, we said we can refer them to contagious diseases or communicable diseases. Simply, they can be spread from one person to another. Yes, uh, in case you get into close, close contact. Uh, yes, uh, so they can be airborne, they can be waterborne. Yes, so those are all infectious diseases. And then uh, we can uh, now move ahead and look at the table properly and look at uh, one by one with the cause. Okay, yes, symptoms signs and symptoms and then prevention uh, so coming to our table properly here we can see that uh, uh, this table simply okay uh, it's a, 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 a summary of this is a disease of, of cows goats okay their signs and symptoms okay prevention and control measures we need to see that yes looking at uh, the first disease here this simply Foot and the mouth disease. Yes, we looked at this, and uh, we say that uh, uh, for these ones, okay, foot and mouth disease here, uh, it is uh, it affects go cattle and goats. Okay, this disease can simply, yes, be caused by virus. Yes, because virus is a germ. These are these are germs. Okay, virus is a type of germs. So this, uh, then uh, as we move this way, we want to see how does it spread. The way it spreads is going to give us either to be infectious or or uh, parasitic. We come here. It spread through contaminated food and water. Yes. So since it can be spread through contact of food that is dirty, contact of water that is dirty, then uh, this becomes infectious disease. Yeah. So when you go to its signs and symptoms, you can say a cattle or cattle having uh, for the most disease will be having rough cut, okay, or rough hair, then uh, swollen body, swollen feet, look at the feet to be swollen, okay, yes, uh, uh, the, the swelling blisters, okay, on the tongue and the gums, so you look at its tongue and the gum in the mouth, you find that they, they will be having uh, swollen blisters, okay, parts which are swollen in the mouth and on the, the tongue. Uh, when we come to simply to prevention, we can talk of uh, quarantine, okay? When we say this simply means keeping sick animals separate from those that are not sick. So you put them in their separate rooms. The word quarantine has become very common these days, okay? It's a, it's a measure that can help us to prevent the control of chemical disease. Yes, also we can now vaccinate animals, okay? This vaccination simply introducing drugs, okay, into animals' bodies to prevent the spread of disease. So why do we vaccinate? This increases immunity, okay, for animals to fight against diseases. As uh, isolation as this is similar to quarantine. So we can simply say quarantine or isolation. So these are this is the same. Okay, now um, then uh, this can push us the second disease. This is a uh, uh, none other than East Coast fever. Uh, this still affects cattle and goats. Okay, if you talk of cattle, also don't forget the young ones, like the calves come to goats, also the young ones, like uh, and the kids, also be affected. Yes, uh, this caused, you look at the cause, yes, it's caused by virus. Okay. Yes, virus which are carried by ticks. So since this this is spread is done by ticks, and ticks are parasites, so we can uh, this can now be referred to a parasitic disease. Remember from the first time time we began, we say that uh, uh, parasites spread some diseases like East Coast fever. So this becomes a parasitic disease. Okay, um, and then we can also refer to those which are spread by ticks as tick-borne diseases. So how to take note of that? When you go to the signs and symptoms, okay, you can look at uh, diarrhea with some blood, okay? 
yes so uh this is a sign because you can see yes uh, uh majorly signs are okay they are seen physically and they, they can see them on the, on the body of animals okay then the, the symptoms we major they are felt in the body like feeling like a high if it's a temperature or fever okay because you can't see fever that's that becomes a, a, a symptom but for the signs majorly they are physically seen okay so the area with some blood okay this becomes what this is a, a sign in animals having east coast fever then also they have fever okay temperature raises so this is a simpler symptom difficulty in breathing so the animal won't be able to breathe okay yes uh, this will show that the animal is having east coast fever uh, this is also associated with all with pneumonia also majorly in, uh, in cats and then uh, when you go to next discharge from the nose so you can see uh, uh, running nose majorly yeah in animals just say yeah it will be this then general weakness the animal will be very weak and at the end you lose appetite not feeding properly so when we see a couple of these signs the area with some blood fever difficulty in breathing this church from the nose or running nose, or running nose uh, which is mucus on the nose then general weakness yeah these ones will show that the animal is suffering from east coast fever and then uh, yes we should not end here we need to look at how should we uh, control this or prevent this disease so what you have to do uh, dipping and spraying cattle goats to kill ticks yes majorly uh, on your farm you should have a cattle dip okay or where you should where you easily uh, dip your animals to, to to control okay to control the spread of of these parasites because the ticks are external parasites so once they are dipped into uh the 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 the, the chemical the acaricides find to be easy to kill these in these these ticks the vectors and then uh, if some of us can also have a cattle crush where you can use sprays you spray the insecticides to kill the, the these vectors then you have also injection with drugs yeah in case they're infected the way to go is to uh, inject drugs which can uh, uh, help them yes yeah, to get free to get cure from from diseases and then uh, this can push us the next disease which is none other than nagana okay uh, nagana uh, in kato yes this is very dangerous majorly but remember for nagana it's a as we say spray by just flies yes just flies can spread remember two, two diseases two common diseases in animals they spread nagana and then in human beings it's a sleeping sickness but for this case talk of animals specifically nagana which is spread by health flies so uh nagana can attack both cattle and goats okay with their young ones and then uh, it is spread okay yes by 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 protozoa this is also a type of germ okay yes it's a germ so protozoa remember we have types of germs commonly four types we have virus uh, protozoa bacteria and fungi yes those ones are, are types of germs so they ask you mention types of germs simply talk of virus bacteria protozoa and the fungi those ones yes they are called the types of germs can easily cause diseases so these germs some of them are carried by vectors okay and some are just spread through close contact so when we come to here this for this case of nagana uh protozoa what it causes uh nagana in animals it is carried by the flies okay so since nagana uh, the protozoa that causes nagana is spread by the flies so this will qualify this disease to be uh, a parasitic disease okay yeah and then we go to signs and symptoms simply look at uh, yes general weakness uh, uh, too much saliva okay it's also produced, produced okay then uh, fever that comes and goes yeah it is not a constant for this case it comes and goes you might think maybe the cow is okay now but again come gets fever back so once you have a couple of these signs please this will be nagana 
So note this. Uh, we don't just base on one sign and or symptom and say this is Nagana or East Coast fever. Because there are some signs that are common in, in all. Okay? Check about general weakness. It can be a sign or symptom of East Coast fever and as well as Nagana. So you check on a couple of them. Like compare, combine this general weakness, too much saliva. This is very important to note this. Then if it goes off and on, this will show that the animal is suffering from Nagana. And then uh, we have to check on the prevention or control. Yes. So for this, simply, uh, we can talk of the control of sesame flies, which can be done by spraying insecticides to kill sesame flies. Okay? This is the best way of preventing or control in Nagana in our cattle and goats. And then we can push or move to the next disease. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, so this so on our table here we can see. Uh, here we can see red red water. Yeah, we talked about this, okay? Yes, as a parasitic disease. Red water is also called uh, anaplasmosis. Anaplasmosis is another name for red water. So red water affects goats and cattle, okay? Yes. And uh, it is simply caused by protozoa, which is carried, okay, by ticks. And when you talk of carried by ticks, this means it's a parasitic disease because ticks are parasites, okay? Yes, they live on the bodies of animals for survival. It's a vectors. So, uh, red water or anaplasmosis, it is a parasitic disease. So, check on the signs and symptoms. Here we can say there's high fever, okay, and there's constipation. Simply, constipation uh, refers to difficulty in uh, uh, passing out wastes, okay. So you find that it won't be able to defecate. It will be finding difficulty. This is called constipation. It also happens uh, in human beings in case somebody has uh, like uh, some uh, digestive disorders. Yes, and uh, then there is anemia, okay? And yellowish mucous membrane. What, yeah, what do you call what, about anemia here? We mean uh, uh, lack of enough blood in the body. You find that it's, uh, uh, it uh, will be lacking enough blood, so it becomes anemic, okay? And the signs of anemia, shortness of breath, such like that, okay? Dizzy, they, they become, they become, there's dizziness, so the signs of anemia. So as you see, dizziness, you see, uh, having such signs, know that, uh, yes, they're having anemia. And then yellowish mucus membrane, okay? Check, or check, check to them, to them to, from the mucus membrane. You see, and then uh, animal leaks or soil. Most of the time, you find this leaking soil. Okay, this is a sign of red water. And then red urine is seen. Simply when they urinate, you see, urine will be red. Okay, uh, and then this will simply show that uh, it is uh, suffering from red water. So a couple of all these signs and symptoms will show that this animal. Uh, is uh, not fine, is suffering from red water or anaplasmosis. So we should not end here. We have to check on the control, okay, and prevention. So, how should we prevent this? Uh, let's look at our treatment, okay, with, with tetracycline antibiotics. So, these ones help to uh, treat your animals so you can easily go to, uh, uh, to, to easily uh, agrotex, okay, you get. You, you get you get you get treatment for your animals. Just ask my animals suffer from such signs, uh, constipation, high fever, anemia, can leak soil. If this urine, this urine is red in the color, yes, they will give you such a treatment, tetracycline antibiotics, okay, to help your animals. And then uh, we can move to the next, which is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Uh, this is a uh, uh, this disease can is that affect both human beings and animals, okay? Yes, so that's why you have to avoid uh, most of sharing uh, water sources with animals or different equipments with animals and human beings. So uh, we check on this. It is it affects cattle still and goats, and then it is caused by bacteria. Okay? 
Yeah, when you check on the how it spreads here, it spread through contact. Can be, yes, can be uh, contact with other animals or contact with the feeds. Maybe they are eating together, they are feeding together. Okay, so this simply uh, will qualify this disease to be an infectious disease because we say the infectious disease are spread and these that are uh, spread through uh, body contact or from one person to another. So they are highly contagious. Yes. So uh, we can now move ahead and check on the signs and symptoms. For signs and symptoms, signs and symptoms here of tuberculosis, we say there is a hard and uh, dry cough. To cough, okay, you can be having coughs, and then a uh, loss of appetite, okay, and dullness to be dull and cannot feed properly. High temperature, simply is seen, and then uh, small swelling, okay, uh, develop, okay. Small swellings drop, okay. Immediately, also you can talk of the. Uh, we talk of and, and the, on the others of infectious animals. So immediately here, the, the small swelling of drops. You check on the drops. The least skin this is lying from the neck, okay, uh, along the neck, okay, of a cow is the drop. So you can find the small swellings on the drop, okay, and then on the other also you find that there are some kind of swellings. So these symptoms, a couple of them, a couple of these signs will show that the animal is having tuberculosis. So to avoid this or, or to control this, simply we can say uh, isolate infected animals. So if one of the animals, okay, is discovered these signs, please keep it separate in a different room. That means to quarantine, okay? Or you can say, or simply can say, apply quarantine restrictions, meaning keep it in a separate a room okay or area that uh, will prevent the spread to other animals then treatment with drugs yeah this also can help treat your animals and with treating animals you have to uh, get advice from a veterinary officer okay these are major poor in a specifically uh, in treatment of animals and then uh, we check of milk should be boiled before okay cooking it okay milk should be boiled or, or before drinking it yes before taking it you should boil majorly uh, if you don't boil this milk sample can just get milk from the cow and drink uh, it is not all advisable because uh, this bacteria will easily infect cause infection to you so what you have to do don't take this milk before it's boiled so boil your milk properly to avoid infections of tuberculosis and then uh, we can uh, move to the next disease that is heart water. Yes, heart water affects both goats and cattle, as you can see. And then uh, it is caused by protozoa. Yes. So this becomes, uh, we, go check, we check on the spread and we said they are spread by ticks. So since they are spread by ticks and ticks are parasites, so this can qualify heart water to be a parasitic disease. Yes. Um, and then uh, we can check on the signs and symptoms here. Yeah. Yes, for this hard water, the hard water there is a high fever, okay, and uh, shivering, okay, dullness and loss of appetite. The animal will be dull, not active, and then you feed, time for feeding. You find that it's not all that feeding well. Then, uh, uh, then they, they will talk about the tanga protrude, the tanga protrudes. The tongue protrudes means it, uh, uh, it extends from the mouth. It can so be easily seen all the time. So this is a sign of hot water. Uh, animal moves, okay, in circles and becomes restless. Oh yeah, this is an example, yeah, sure. It's also another sign. And then uh, when animal falls down, okay, the legs keep uh, pedaling in the air. Yes, you find it keeps pedaling air. So these are signs of hot water. So we should not stop here if an animal is attacked to this. We should now check for treatment, okay? So treat animals with tetracycline antibiotics. So these ones you can easily still get them, okay? And then uh, get them with the advice of a veterinary officer or vet. And then uh, uh, control ticks. So to control ticks, majorly spread carrots, spraying of in insecticides to kill ticks yes uh, 
And then, uh, so this, have you looked at this? Uh, we can uh, simply see that uh, we have summarized this in just in a table, which gives us a view, a clear view. Okay? And uh, take note of this. We, talk, we talked of parasite or uh, diseases which are grouped in two ways. That some should be called, should be referred to parasitic diseases, and then others should be referred to infectious diseases or contagious, which is also communicable. So now, we say those which are parasitic, so talk about hot water, red water, yes, Nagana, East Coast fever. Yes, and don't forget those which are, uh, which are, which are, which are infectious, like anthrax, foot and mouth disease, tuberculosis. Yes, those ones are infectious. They can easily spread. So having looked at all that, we can just have, a, okay, yes, summary of general ways of controlling these uh, diseases, okay? So in simple terms, one can simply can ask you, how should we control such diseases? Talk of vaccination, as we talked last, the other side in the table. So vaccinate, introduce drugs to animals, okay? To give them immunity against diseases and then quarantine or isolation okay isolate your animals keep them in separate uh, structures for those which are sick and from those who are not sick then sanitation is very important keep hygiene of the farm okay to avoid the uh, spread of the infectious disease like uh, to uh, like uh, anthrax mouth disease okay yes then the use of drugs such as antibiotics to treat diseases the disease this is very important and then now uh, we talked of dipping or spraying to control external parasites that may cause diseases so you dip your animals or spray with with uh, insecticides to kill the parasites yes so uh this uh this is the, this becomes right very clear and then uh, it brings us to the end of our lesson but uh before we end the lesson Yes, uh, you have got different, uh, different activities which you've left to do. Yes, check on this table here. In your free time, yes, answer questions. Like here, you are given here, the, you ask the product from the gods, okay? And then it's important. Yes, check products like meat, okay? Skin and hides. Yes, and then uh, what's the importance, okay? Then products from cows, still check milk, Talk of meat, talk of skins, and their importance. So this would be good. Yes, so you can be asked to mention animal products with their importance. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, this will push us uh, to the end of our lesson. So please have time and come this table that our next time we meet when you've done all this. Yes, so uh, having looked at all that, uh, it's uh, time that we, we end our lesson and uh, I advise you to get your time to go through all this work to help you yes and as we come back we shall just be still uh, at par yes uh, thank you for watching us